Nothing is a concept we all know. No job, no salary, no millions in the bank, or the empty void we stare into every day after we finished working for someone else for 8 consecutive hours. That's the nothing many of us are aware of and comfortable with. In programming, the concept of nothing is also pretty dominant. Sometimes there is something, and sometimes there isn't. Many programming languages deal with this fact by providing programmers with a null pointer. The so-called billion dollar mistake. If something is null, it still takes the shape of whatever type it refers to. But if you try to call something on a reference that is null, your program usually goes back. The creators of Rust thought about this and came to the conclusion that nothingness must be more than only null. This is where they invented one of the clever types of Rust, option, and left out null completely in the safe parts of the language. Rust's option is a generic and type-safe way to say that something might be present or absent. It's an enum that can take one of two forms. First, a sum. So something is present and that something is nested within that sum. Second, a none. Because there's simply nothing and there's also nothing to nest within that none. Option is so important in Rust that you don't even have to import it explicitly. It's always included in the so-called prelude, a set of automatic imports in any Rust source file. Some and none are also always included. You don't even have to prefix them explicitly. The compiler always knows what you refer to. As there is no other way in safe Rust to deal with nothingness, you always juggle around with options explicitly. If one of your functions has an optional parameter, it must accept an option. If it returns an optional result, it also must return an option. There are two ways to deal with options in your code. The first one is to use the match statement with an option that allows you to handle both cases, some and none. In this case, you can just react to the respective member type and even the structure of the content of the sum into a variable that you can use within the corresponding match arm. You can also replace the match statement with an if let statement for a shortcut if you only want to deal with one type. The second way is to use the monad style functions of an option. Map allows you to work with the maybe existing value of a sum and turn it into something else. And then allows you to take the potentially existing value of a sum put it into another function that returns another option and flatten that into a single option again. Filter allows you to check a boolean condition that turns the option into a none if it fails and leaves it a sum if it succeeds. If you feel a little risky, you can use unwrap and try to rip a value out of an option, which makes a problem go when called on a none. And a safer way to do that is to use unwrap or else, which provides a default and allows you to leave the world of option. Memory-wise, an option behaves like any other enum. If the value a sum holds is pretty large, any occurrence of none will also take up the same amount of memory. In scenarios where you don't have much memory to work with, you might want to consider other alternatives, especially when working with large vectors of options that contain many instances of none. That's it for Rust's option in 180 seconds. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Until then, see you in the next video.